Hello guys, my name is Tom Antos and in this uh, video I want to take you along kind of with me and show you a little behind the scenes uh, of me working uh, and sort of also share my technique, my approach uh, when I'm doing these kind of uh, jobs. This happened to be a music video I shot in Ecuador. Uh, I was the cinematographer on it, it was uh, directed by Danny Ruan. And the first thing you need, uh, you know, if you want your cinematography to look good, is to get the right location. So, so this music video is about this uh, this guy who uh, comes from a poor family of fishermen. Uh, the location that we got uh, permission to film in, as you can see, is very primitive looking. It's actually uh, it's kind of a typical sort of a house on the coast of Ecuador. And definitely having the right location is gonna is gonna be like right there at fifty percent of your look. Now it does not mean that you can just show up to your location and just you know just start filming. You also need good production design. So in this case, our production design team, as you can see here on the left side of the room, uh, there wasn't really anything done because we weren't really gonna be you know capturing any of those angles. But on the right side here, uh, you can see how drastically different that bed looks. So it still looks poor. But the production design team added these nice kind of white, uh, you know, kind of sheets hanging over the bed, added these kind of beads with uh, different kind of shells and things like that. Uh, you know, just all those little touches that, uh, again, still make it feel poor, uh, but it also just makes it look uh, nicer, kind of more pleasing to the eye. There's some some design put into this, uh, some thought. And uh, and that, this is going to be crucial. You If you simply point a camera at some ugly looking location or let's say you're filming inside like a, a room with plain white walls for example it's going to look horrible uh, for example in this case you can see just off to the right side uh, like basically we have that tv there covered by the piece of uh, cardboard and that's because we knew that we're not going to ever pan that far right we're just going to get basically that area around the door where you see a bit of that shelf and you see those uh, those shelves on the door um, so once you have your kind of your production design done, first thing you got to start doing is figuring out your angles. So I knew more or less I'm going to be on a 50 millimeter lens. And in here, you can see me adjusting the angle. And right away when I go to the, my left side and I can see those kind of beats and those decorations there on the left side of the screen, I know this is, it just looks a lot more interesting, just having something in the foreground. So, so obviously picking your angle and your composition is going to be very crucial. Once you have that more or less figured out, then you can start building the light. Lighting in, in this scene. So the, the strongest light that I used in this scene, uh, sort of our key light, is uh, this Came TV Bolson light uh, that I have up here. And uh, I like this light because it's it's a Fresnel you know lens uh, light, so I can really spot focus it, make it really strong uh, and sharp. Uh, and also you know uses very little power, uh, which is good because at this location we did not have a generator and we're actually connecting to the the um, you know outlets in this house, which were. Uh, a little bit sketchy to say the least uh, you know I was kind of afraid because our whole house was built out of bamboo and had like plastered like Wall, wallpaper and and just other pieces of paper all over the walls as you can see and I was honestly worried that something was going to catch on fire so we had to be very careful and another great thing about these uh, these new uh, Fresnel lights like the one here I'm using from a TV is that uh, they're all LEDs so they don't really get hot now uh, I basically set that light up behind uh, our actor here so he's going to walk in through the door uh, and then uh, that uh, acts sort of as this uh, to simulate the strong sunlight coming in through, you know, supposedly a window or something back there. Um, and then I put another li uh, light, which is also a Kim TV Bolson uh, light, but these smaller ones. Uh, and uh, that one I put it so that it shines on those beads there on the left side of the screen. So you can see now those beads are a lot more noticeable because that light kind of backlights them. And again, makes it feel like there's all this strong sunlight coming in from basically from the, you know, behind the house there from the camera left. Even though technically there were actually were any windows, uh, you know, on the other side of the, of the house. And also on the day that we happened to be filming, it was all uh, overcast. So there was no direct sunlight. Now, uh, to kind of provide a bit of a fill and just you know, a bit more kind of a, this ambient feeling of just like a lot of light and to brighten up the whole scene, we used as a reflector. You can see their assistant holding up the reflector. Uh, this one happened to be with the silver side. And it was just, again, placed at the, the back of that room there. Uh, so as our actor basically walks into the door, we're bouncing some of that light back on his face. 
Now, another thing I wanted to add is this kind of music video is supposed to be, it's all sort of like these memories or kind of like these, you know, distant memories and, and thoughts that the, the singer has of his life. Uh, so we decided to use uh, just these pieces of glass and whatever kind of filters that we could to kind of give it a bit more of this dreamy look. So you can see me there uh, putting in this pieces literally of broken glass and plastic and things like that. And I'm carefully placing it uh, at a certain angle in front of the lens to create these reflections. And that's again where that light, uh, that smaller Cam TV light that's shining onto those beads and a little bit onto the lens of the camera comes in really handy because that again is gonna help you uh, catch a bit more of those reflections. You need to have actually some kind of a strong light source shining right, right, uh, you know, at that uh, at those glass objects. Uh, then the next thing we added is a little bit of fog, uh, and you can see sometimes you know if you add a little bit too much, you can end up looking like a, a little bit too dramatic. <laughs> and okay, Ren Kai is Darth Vader. Go. Embrace the dark side. <laughs> uh, so we just wanted just a little bit of fog to give it kind of a feeling of, again, this kind of a poor house where maybe they're cooking over a fire somewhere and it just has this atmosphere. Then after that, you just fine tune your camera position and the position of that glass in front of the, the lens, as you can see, just to get those kind of interesting reflections, kind of give it a bit more of this dreamy look. And, you know, just start recording. And once you get the right kind of take, uh, we knew that in this, you know, it's a quick shot. It just he kind of comes in through the door, looks over at his mother, uh, who's uh, sick in, in her bed, and, and then he kind of sits next to her and plays a guitar for her. Um, so yeah, once we got this angle, then we move on to the, the next shot. Now the next shot that we got is this uh, reverse angle, as you can see up here, where uh, you can see the singer is coming up here, is going to sit down on the chair next to the bed, uh, and we're kind of seeing a bit more of the of the other side of the room now. So. Uh, again, being careful not to show the left side of the room where the production design uh, did not decorate it. So we're just showing kind of this corner here, this bed with all these nice beads. Uh, and uh, one thing I really definitely wanted to get is to, again, achieve that feeling of this kind of this nice morning light, uh, very strong kind of coming in through those openings there uh, in those walls. Uh, and kind of seeing these rays of light. So the first light that I set up was, again, that uh, bigger Cam TV Fresnel uh, LED light. And that one, we had it set up on a light stand, kind of, you know, outside behind the house. We kind of put it up uh, and then we shined it through this little window that was uh, uh, there in that bedroom uh, at an angle so that it would produce these nice rays of light. Now, again, so that, you know, where those rays of light are visible, uh, you need something in the air, so some kind of atmosphere. So, again, we just put some uh, some more fog, uh, you know, with our fog machine. And the next light I set up was, uh, again, another light that was just kind of providing this ambience and kind of nice overall soft lighting that, again, just makes the room feel a lot brighter, which in reality, when you were there, it was very dark because uh, there, were, there was barely any windows. Um, so I have this one light kind of here bouncing off of this uh, styrofoam board. And you can see on this angle, the camera left. And then on the camera right, I have uh, then again an another Cam TV light that I'm shining through those, uh, that basically fabric that's hanging over the bed. And that fabric, you know, it's nice because it's very uh, translucent. So it actually lets in a lot of the light, but, uh, but it also just diffuses it perfectly. So kind of, again, provides this beautiful ambient soft lighting uh, in the room. And then once we kind of fine tune our camera positions, uh, then we actually end up shooting this uh, part of the scene on two cameras. So we had one camera shooting this kind of a extreme wide angle. This was a 12 millimeter lens. Now at the same time, I was actually operating another camera, which uh, had a 50 millimeter lens on it. Uh, and uh, I was kind of more tucked away in the corner so I could get these angles here of the uh, of the singer and, and as you can see you know it's uh, it kind of looks interesting this scene because again the production design there's just all these nice things to look at even though again it's, it doesn't look rich doesn't you know you, you can have a very poor looking location but it doesn't mean that it uh, it can't be interesting looking nice composition also and interesting angles uh, and we just kind of you know ended up getting a few other shots like this kind of a over the shoulder here shot where uh, he's looking at you know a, kind of a close-up of his mother's face 
Now, I, I can't actually show you the finished music video because it's not uh, finished yet. So uh, once it's edited and posted online, I'll definitely post a link up here. Uh, but for now, just so you can kind of get an idea of what the music video might look like, uh, I'm just going to take some of these shots here and just apply some color correction. Uh, and a color correction is pretty simple. Uh, I actually utilize uh, some some LUTs. Now the the footage was shot in S Log Two, so you know once I apply my some basic color grading, uh, and then you know apply my kind of creative LUT, uh, which is one of one of the LUTs that you can find uh, on my website at tomantosfilms.com. Uh, then the the last thing really that's left to do is to um, in this case I'm just going to apply the widescreen bars because this was actually shot uh, with the framing was was meant to be uh, sort of you know two three five kind of a cinema scope uh, wide aspect ratio so I'm going to kind of crop off the top and the bottom and then you know the final thing with the color grading then the letterboxing and then also uh, you know the nice slow motion you can see definitely makes a big difference when you see the final final product so uh, I'm I, I definitely I can't wait to see the you know how the the rest of the music video is going to turn out how it's all going to be edited uh, but in the meantime I'm going to try to share some more kind of interesting tutorials and behind the scenes uh, of me working on, on on this music video and uh, a few other projects I had a chance to recently shoot uh, so you guys can kind of shadow me and follow me uh, kind of on set and see how it is working on these uh, various different budget you know kind of production from uh, whether you're working on something super super small with no team uh, to something a little bit you know bigger like this kind of a mid-sized production where we actually had a production designer we had a, a production team set dressers and things like that which uh, again I'm going to stress to you guys if you want your cinematography to look good you got to First of all, you know, find something interesting to film. You can, you know, you can't expect to get beautiful shots if you're just filming inside, let's say, a, a, you know, a room with just plain white walls. That's like the number one thing you want to stay away from. So, uh, does doesn't matter whether your your scene is supposed to be set in a really you know, expensive and rich looking house or location or some street that looks really expensive and beautiful, or if it's supposed to look kind of old, dirty, grimy, kind of, you know, uh, or poor, uh, it can, you can have all kinds of different, uh, you know, locations. It's just at the end of the day, you still have to put in the time and the work and make sure that you're working closely with your production design team to make sure that the set looks interesting, that there's uh, something interesting to basically film. And then your job as, as a cinematographer is, uh, is to then capture it from the best angle and with the best light. Now, if you want more information about the, the gear that I used in this project and uh, the cameras were the Sony a6500, uh, and actually, we had two cameras running in that other shot, which was uh, the other camera was a Sony A6300. Uh, the lenses we used was the 12 millimeter Rokinon lens and also the 50 millimeter lens. Uh, for these uh, shots here, they're a little bit tighter. Um, also, as far as the lighting, uh, all of the lighting was actually Cam TV lights. So I used these smaller uh, Boltzmann uh, lights, which are LED kind of miniature Fresnel lights, very cool lights. I use them in my studios and uh, for a lot of these shoots where, again, I, you know, especially if I'm traveling to some remote locations and I can't carry a lot of gear because these lights pack very small. They're literally the size of like a zoom lens. Uh, I also had uh, these, this other larger Cam TV light, which is very strong. It's equivalent in the power output of uh, about a 1000 watt uh, tungsten light, even though uh, it only uses, I think, 150 watts. Uh, and it's uh, again, it doesn't really get hot. Has all these cool functions. You can focus it. You can flood it. Uh, comes with barn doors. Uh, if you guys want more information, I'll provide a link to where uh, where you can find more info about this light, and also if you want to purchase it. So all of that stuff is going to be in the description of this video. Uh, and anyways, uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you smash that like button, uh, subscribe if, if you haven't already, and if you did but you want to be notified of other videos I do, uh, then definitely hit that bell notification button. And also let me know in the comment section below what other videos would like me to do. Uh, maybe kind of other interesting topics to, that they want me to delve into more um, and all that stuff. And, uh, and otherwise, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.